guys, welcome back to another video. I was actually tagged in this book tag that I'm going to do by Books Nerd and Other Things. I will leave her video down below. So, with the tag, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and go into the questions because there's a lot. So, I'll be looking down on my page quite often. So, here we go. And by the way, this tag is called a Reader's Journey Tag. And this little guy likes to get stuck onto whatever clothes I'm wearing. How unfortunate is that? <laughs> All right, here we go. Childhood reading. First book you remember reading. Okay, the first book, I don't know if this was the first book, but I remember reading these books a lot when I was younger, which is, oh, the Little Critter books. I was trying to remember what it was because it's been so long ago. But I remember reading these books when I was a kid and I would like line up my stuffed animals and I would always read to them and I think it was always these different books because I was obsessed with them and I really liked them so I was always usually reading that to them. Alright, the next question is, was there someone who encouraged you to read? My mom encouraged me to read a lot when I was younger. Like I said, I remember reading this book, and I remember I had the Jungle Book when I was younger, because somewhere I have an old picture of me holding the Jungle Book and smiling in my school picture. Like, it was the coolest thing ever. But, that was me. And some things never changed, because I still like to hold up pictures of books and take pictures with it. So I think that's where it all started was with the Jungle Book. Thank you, Jungle Book. Do I remember pieces of it? Mm, kind of, but like I said, it's been so long ago, but obviously I liked it that much. I wanted my picture with it. There's that. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, if you read as a child, talk about some books you enjoyed. Like I said, I enjoyed the Jungle Book, I enjoyed the Little Critters books. Those are all that I can actually remember reading. Maybe a little bit of The Magic Treehouse. Um, the Berenstein Bear books, I think. Sort of remember those, but sort of not, but I remember those three bears. I don't remember their names, but I remember about those three bears. I think there was three. It's been so long ago. But I always used to get books from Scholastic when I was younger. Whenever I would get them, my I would like circle out which ones I wanted. And usually, mostly, I got them. Because, like I said, my mom really wanted me to read a lot when I was younger. And I'm a reader now because I have these bookshelves in my room. So, there's that. <laughs> Alright. And then, in my teenage year, I read a little bit, and probably not as lot as I wanted to. But, like, close to, like, when I was, like, 13 and stuff, I remember my teacher being obsessed with the one and only Harry Potter. So, that got me a little bit more into reading, into, like, magic and, like, stuff like that. I was, like, I wasn't obsessed with it, but I had a couple of shirts from Harry Potter, and yes. <laughs> I just remember we read, like, I think the first two books and then watched the movies after we were done with the books because we were cool like that, and I enjoyed it. Alright, the next book I remember reading twice, actually, in high school, and I read it again not that long ago, which is Blue is for Nightmares by Lori Farah Dollars. This definitely has magic involved in it, and it's about a girl who has nightmares, and the only way to solve it 
trying to think of how I want to put this. The only way she can solve it is just to uh, trust her instincts and like her nightmares try to make it not come real if she can. Because she's also a witch in this series as well so that's a different way to look at it and it, they're really good. I got my cousin to read it and she enjoyed the series as well and I was like I told you you would. So this has been with me since high school. You can tell it's beaten up and really old and I loved the series. I still do to this day. And then the next book is also a really old one and it's a smaller one and I read it like my senior year as well and that is The She by Carol Plum. I'm not even sure how you add in that last part of her name but I remember enjoying this and it had some like curse words in this book and I was like whoa what? And as a teenager that was kind of big. Because I haven't read a book yet that had that in there, and this one definitely did. I don't know if I can find it, but I remember highlighting this. Yep. I highlighted some of the words that were in curse. That was the curse words that I was like, whoa. That person really went all out and was mad as a hornet. But it was funny, and I really enjoyed it reading it. Not only did I find that part, but like I said, throughout the rest, I really liked the she. It's been years since I've read it, but I'm not, give, I'm not ready to give this bad boy up. Memories. Love it. Alright. We're going to move on. What books got you into reading, and how did you come across that book? Um, like I said, the book I, that probably got me into reading probably was Harry Potter, and again, my teacher gave us the group book so that we could read, and we had to, like, read sections out loud in the class, or follow her along in reading it. That's what I remember. So, there's that. <laughs> Have you always been a reader, or was there a time you stopped? Um, I don't really remember reading much in 9th grade through 11th grade. I know I did because I was quick at reading, but I, the only ones that I remember reading are Fear Street books back in the day. <laughs> I was obsessed with Fear Street. Not Goosebumps, but Fear Street because I liked R.L. Stein, and those were the kind of books that I was into at the time. I know I checked some out from the library when I was younger, but again, I really don't remember what ones those were because it was so, so long ago. But I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So there was that. And I remember my senior year, if we didn't get out early, we had a sheet from one through like 15-ish books. I think I got 1 through 14 done because we had to leave early, like I said, because we were seniors and we got out early because we were graduating, but I just remember coming in the next day with the new book and someone was like, you're done with your book already? It's like, I'm sorry I like to read and you don't. That's one of the things I, I don't know why I remember that one, but for some reason, I do. And that I felt proud at that actually. <laughs> All right. Who was your favorite author? What is your all-time favorite book? My all-time favorite book. I'm gonna bring it up again, which is Blues for Nightmares by Lori Farah Stollers. <clears throat> like I said, I reread this twice in high school, and I got my cousin to read it when she was in school and she really enjoyed it and like I said it's about a girl named Stacy who's in her junior year at boarding school and she's having nightmares about her roommate who is trying to kill her but Stacy wants to figure out who the killer is before that actually happens and that I think was what really got me more into magic and like 
more into like a fantasy, if you will. But I just remember this book was like my favorite. Like I took it everywhere with me when I had time. Because you never know when you're going to have some reading time down and you just don't want to sit there being bored so you might as well read a little bit, right? That's how the way I am today, so there's that for you. Okay, the next one we have is genre, what genres you love. Um, like I said, I love fantasy, I like magic elements, I like young adult, I like YA books, that's going to be everybody's answer, but I also like a little bit of romance, I like a little bit of horror books, which, scary books, obviously, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I like. And then the next question we have, do you reread books? Yes, I have actually reread this book this year because, like I said, it's been so long since I've read it and I remember just loving it so much that I wanted to do a reread of it. Alright, are there any books that you have never finished? Uh, there's a couple that I have DNF'd last month and this month because I just... I started halfway through it and it was good and then like it just fell flat for me so I c did not want to push through didn't just couldn't do that I know there was a couple books that I pushed through and I ended up not really liking them so I'm to this point to where I don't want to do that anymore if I don't like the book I ain't gonna finish it so that's what ended up happening alright <clears throat> Is there a book you have been meaning to read for ages? Um, all oh, that's on my TBR. If you're following me on Good Goodreads, you'll know there's a lot of books. But the one I've been meaning to finish reading, there's quite a lot. There's The Priory of the Orange Tree, which I really want to finish because I've heard nothing but absolute good things and Kingdom of Ash. I've been avoiding spoilers like it's my A game because I love that series. And yet it's, yes, it's a huge one and I'm taking my time with them, but I'm hopefully, I am hoping to get it done sometime this year, hopefully before January 1st. Not sure if that's going to happen, but we're definitely going to try that. Okay, favorite quotes. Um, let me pull out my little fancy bullet journal because I have my favorite quotes in here. Like, I have one from A Court of Mist and Fury. When you spend so long trapped in darkness, Lucian, you find that the darkness begins to stare back. And then... You Could Rattle the Stars, Sarah J. Mass. The Brighter the Light, the Deeper the Shadow, Never Night. It was impossible, of course, but when did that ever stop any dreamer from, dreamer, from dreaming? Wow, Strange the Dreamer, which I absolutely loved. Reading Strange the Dreamer, and then Never Flinch, Never Fear, Never Forget. Never Night. In case you all didn't know what that one was. And then When Everyone Knows You're a Monster, You Didn't Needn't Waste Time Doing Every Monstrous Thing. Six of Crows. Brave doesn't mean you're not scared. It means you go on even though you're scared. The hate you give. Love the hate you give. And then, many boys will bring you flowers, but someday you'll meet a boy who will learn your favorite flower, your favorite song, your favorite sweets. And, even if he is too poor to give you any of them, it won't matter because he will have taken the time to know you as no one else does, only that boy earns your heart. Six of Crows and yes! Like I'm obsessed with that one. 
Don't feel bad for one moment about doing what brings you joy. A Court of Thrones and Roses. That's pretty much what all I have for quotes in my bullet journal. Because those are the ones I absolutely love. And I have them in here. For, you know, memories one day. Aww. <clears throat> How have your reading habits slash views changed over the years? Um, the only thing habits that have changed over the years is like how I give the ratings like if it's a 3.5 star or if it's a 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5 stars that's pretty much the only thing that has changed do you listen to audiobooks yes the very first audiobook I ever listened to was the seven husbands of Evanly Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I absolutely adored it. Even though I listened to it on two point speed because I wanted to get it done and it was so good and it was just incredible. Like I wanted to go and look her up because yes she's fictional but I wanted her to be real because I wanted to see what movies that sh this Evanly Hugo was in, and I really liked it. Okay, buying versus going to the libraries. I rather own the book because if you can't already see, I have my own little library going on, and I just I adore having books. I like I need books in my life. And try to get my nieces into reading, so there's also that little clip. Do you read one book at a time or multiple books at once? I read multiple books at once. I used to read one at a time, and then I went to two at a time, and then now it's like more than two, and I really need to stop because if I don't finish them, they're on my Goodreads for like ever and I think I'm like in the middle of 27 books that but I'm only like currently in between one two three like maybe eight right at this moment <laughs> how am I keeping all these worlds straight I have no idea I honestly don't but uh try. <laughs> Alright, the next question is physical books versus ebooks versus audiobooks. Um, I'm going to say physical and audiobooks because I can get more done with the audiobooks and I can get through the book quicker and faster and still be able to enjoy it. And if there's one that sounds super bad for an audiobook, I'll just like send it back to my Libby library. Like, nope. I can't do you anymore. And then I go to the next one and it's like, okay, yeah, I get you. I like you. We're going to continue listening. And then with that, that's really good. And with physical, it takes me a little while to read it, but I enjoy both. So we're going to go with both. All right. When did you discover BookTube and who was the first BookTuber you ever watched? Um... I first discovered book two back in 2017 when I was reading Maximum Ride. Ow, um, just dragged myself with the pen. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was really liking Maximum Ride. I was wondering if there was like any like videos on Maximum Ride. I don't know where I got the idea from, but I typed it in. And then I found Pierre Ford, and she did the Maximum Ride web series. And I really liked it, and then like... Sometimes slowly after that, I watched a couple of her videos for like reviews and stuff that was in that time, and I found quite a few books that I never would have picked up if it wasn't for her, so thank you. I'll tag her, I don't know if she'll watch this video, but, but thank you. So yeah, that's pretty much all I had for this video for A Reader's Journey Tag. And if you haven't done this tag, and if this tag sounds like a fun idea, consider yourself tagged. You're it. <laughs> but, 
that's pretty much all for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!